Welcome to Authorized Version Bible Thumper Ministries, dedicated to the gospel of Jesus Christ and preaching and teaching the word of God from the preserved and fallible King James Bible of 1611. Welcome to another study on Romans. In this study, we're going to be picking up in Romans chapter 2 and verse 8. But before we get begin, I do want to comment on a few things. Uh, the recording of this particular study is actually on October 31st. Now, the Lost World knows this day as Halloween, a very satanic, uh, wicked holiday that Christians should not be partaking in at all. Um, Halloween is founded on sorcery, druids. It's a very wicked, satanic, pagan holiday that comes straight from the druids and really has not changed that much at all. It went from actual wicked sorcery and murderings to children dressing up in costumes and running around like little ghouls and goblins and eating very, to for lack, basically toxic candy. Uh, the candy that, that people find in the stores, the Snickers, the chocolate bars, it's all made with refined sugar. Whole nother issue, but the fact of the matter is, is that stuff is practically poisonous. It's very terrible for people. It's full of chemicals and all kinds of stuff. So this is a wicked holiday. But the actual day that this uh, this day is on as well is called Reformation Day. Now, Reformation Day is essentially the day that Martin Luther, a, uh, a reformer, and now Martin Luther had some serious issues and everything. He was pretty much nothing more than a Catholic, if you examine him in his history. But the fact of the matter is, is that he began to break away from the Catholic Church. And that's what basically started the Reformation. That's what began the protesting of Rome and all of its wicked laws and unbiblical commands uh, about on the scriptures. Because Rome, Roman Catholics, overthrow scripture with their divine traditions every time. They put the traditions of men above the word of God. That's why they're so wicked. They also do all kinds of wicked sorcery type of stuff. They do what they call transubstantiation, where they offer up Jesus, they take a little, uh, p a little bread cookie type thing, a wafer, they offer it up like a pagan in the old times, offering up to the sun god. They go, they go up to the sun like this, and they say some sort of incantation. That's supposed to make it the actual body, and the little wine that they have, the actual blood of Jesus Christ. It's a very wicked, satanic practice. It's against the Bible. It's against the Lord. There is no continual sacrificing of Jesus Christ and eating his body to uh, receive forgiveness for sins. Jesus Christ died once for sins. So... The idea being is that that's what that's just one of the many things in the indulgences and all the wicked stuff that the Roman Catholic Church was doing that was contrary to Scripture that led to the Protestant Reformation. Now today, of course, Protestants are really nothing more than Reformed Catholics. They're still trying to keep the traditions of Rome and everything. They have their own issues. But that movement was used to give us the King James Bible because over the years, then came time for them to create a perfect translation that was meant to unite Protestants and Catholics and instead did the complete opposite. This book is against everything that Rome stands for. That's why the, the Catholics out there cannot handle, they can't stand the King James Bible. Amen. And amen for the Reformation, for what it did do. So I just had to comment on that as well because it's just that's what today actually does. That's what the memorial for today is to remember that the Reformation started and now we have the Word of God, the perfect Word of God in the English language for those of us who speak English. Amen and praise the Lord. So with that being said, let's go ahead and jump on into the study. So we, pick, we left off at Romans chapter 7 and right now we're going to pick up in verse 8. But unto them that are contentious and do not obey the truth but obey unrighteousness, indignation, and wrath. Now, I talked about this in the previous study. The actual context of these verses is the time of Jacob's trouble. The preceding verses talk about doing good works. Verse 8 is talking about those who do bad works, but obey unrighteousness, indignation, and wrath. Well, that's the wrath of God. So the wrath of God will be on people who do evil. And not only that, he's also going to send them strong delusion. Go to 2 Thessalonians. Go 
Second Thessalonians chapter 2 and beginning in verse 3. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, beginning in verse 3. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he as God sit, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Remember ye not that when I was with you, yet with you, I told you these things? And now ye know what withholdeth, what withholdeth that ye might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall con consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even whom, even him whose working, uh, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders, and with all deceivable, deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this cause God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. So you see very clearly that, that the time of Jacob's trouble after the rapture People who love on righteousness that do wickedly, they're going to get a strong delusion. Now, we don't know what that strong delusion is, but God's going to send a delusion upon them. That they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned. If you don't get saved now, you're going to have it really rough in the time of Jacob's trouble. But again, that's, the Lord is going, to, is going to send that strong delusion upon them. And those are the people that are going to be following after the Antichrist and the Mark of the Beast. And that's the thing, too. I also want to kind of briefly comment on that. There's a lot of fools out there that say that there is no Antichrist. They'll say, it's all spiritual. The spirit of Antichrist is in everybody. It's, it's not one man. Look at what you just read there in Thessalonians. Um, uh, ver verse 3. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. That man of sin revealed the son of the, the son of perdition. One man, the Antichrist. Now you, you'll hear that from heretics out there. They really show me the Antichrist in Scripture. It's right there. Uh, ridiculous people out there. There's a lot of heresies and heretics that will just attack the pure doctrines of the King James Bible. And on to verse nine. Tribulation and anguish upon every soul of man that doeth evil, of the Jew first and also of the Gentile. So you see again, to those who do evil, that's punishment. They're going to be punished for doing evil. Amen. That's the kind of God that we, that we worship, that we believe in, a righteous, perfect, just, holy God. I mean, that's, uh, that's, that's perfect. We need a God that, had that, that utilizes judgment, a God that knows right from wrong, that will... Senten that will give a proper sentence, a proper judge. You know, people all the time just have flip-outs over the Lord and his righteous judgment and everything. And they'll just, you'll know, make up all kinds of excuses, all kinds of st stupid stories to try to explain, well, what about this? You know, why, why can't this person do this? Why would God send somebody like that to hell for all eternity? Because he's righteous and you're not? Face it. Face up. Face what you are. You're a dirty, rotten sinner in God's eyes, and you need to be saved. You need his righteousness because he's far above you. God is so holy, you can't even stand to be around him. The only reason we have access to him is because Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins. And those of us who get saved and put our faith in that, come to him in repentance, have access, have access directly to God. For those who stay lost, no. And you never will unless you get saved. I mean, God is so righteous. It's absolutely, uh, I mean, it's really something. And verse 10. But glory, honor, and peace to every man that worketh good, to the Jew first, and also to the Gentile. So again, someone doing, working good. Now, I do want to briefly mention that a lot of what's going on in the time of Jacob's trouble is going to lead up to the, the judgment to actually get into the Millennial Kingdom. The Great White Throne Judgment is actually after the Millennial Kingdom. So the, 
the judgment that first is going to come on people who go into the time of Jacob's trouble is going to be a judgment of sorts that's basically the sheep and the goats judgment. And basically the sheep are the people who kept good works during the time of Jacob's trouble and the Lord lets them into the millennial kingdom. Those are people that are still in the flesh. They haven't even been redeemed by their bodies through the rapture. But other people who were wicked in the time of Jacob's trouble took the mark and all that stuff, they're going to hell. And then they're going to be coming up after the thousand years for the great white throne judgment. So a lot of interesting interesting things happening there. A lot of um, a lot of stuff to uh, to rightly divide and understand. But that's what's going on. But again, it's good to those who do good. People who do right in the time of Jacob's trouble and have good works, keep the law to the best of their ability and everything like that, uh, they are going to get into that kingdom. Again, the book of Revelation is still very much a sealed book. We don't understand 100% how that exactly works, but that is what the Bible says. And verse 11, For there is no respect of persons with God, I mean, whether you're a Jew or Gentile, you're going to be re rewarded the same. There's no respect of persons. So whether you're a Jew who gets through that time or a Gentile who gets through that time, uh, you're going to receive the reward. You're going to be let into the kingdom. And verse 12. For as many as have sinned without law shall also perish without law, and as many as have sinned in the law shall be judged by the law. Now, this verse is very interesting, and I have to say, from what I understand, from what I believe about this verse, is that perishing without law looks to me like it's going to it's a, someone going to hell, someone who dies without the law. In that, keep in mind, this is again the the time of Jacob's trouble. So, someone who perishes without law, well, that word "perish" is oftentimes used as a reference to something being completely, you know, lost and done away with, essentially. Um, and with that being said, then it looks to me like what the, this verse is saying is that someone who dies without the law, well, for as many have sinned without, have sinned without law, shall also perish without law. So meaning they didn't, they didn't live in the law and everything, and they perished and went to hell. As many have, have sinned in the law shall be judged by the law. Notice, as many have sinned in the law shall be judged by the law. So... That's what leads me to believe that the first part of verse 12 is just flat out going to hell. Because as many, because it doesn't say here, someone who sinned in the law goes to hell, it says they shall be judged by the law. So verse 12 is very interesting on that part. And see, those who, who sin are in the law are judged by the law. That would be Jews and Gentiles. So notice again, it says they. And verse 13. For not the hearers of the law are just before God, but the doers of the law shall be justified. So in the Old Testament, they had to do that law. And the time of Jacob's trouble, they're going to have to do that law as well. The proof for that would be in Revelation 14. Revelation chapter 14. Beginning in verse 12. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Two things. Keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Two different things happening there. So again, you tie that back in with this passage. They are actually having to keep the commandments and have the faith of Jesus. So if that's all included in the time of Jacob's trouble then those that are being judged in the law there and everything that have sinned in the law and are being judged by it, that's why that's happening, because the law is going to come back. And, verse, and in verse 14, again, as we referenced in the previous study, Abimelech is a perfect example of that, of that whole thing, because if you read verse 14 as well, getting ahead of myself, for when the Gentiles which have not the law do by nature the things contained in the law, these having not the law are a law unto themselves. So you see right there, that would be Abimelech in, back in Genesis 20. In the Old Testament, they were a law unto themselves. Again, similar to the time of Jacob's trouble. Because again, you have the commandments of God in the faith of Jesus. 
So in the Old Testament, they were justified by their conscience. I talked about that in the previous study, how in the Old Testament, before the law was given to the Jewish people, there was the conscience, and how they, Gentiles actually had the same core faith as Abraham, because they started off believing in the same God, and then over time, paganization came in. So with that being said, they were justified their, by their conscience. Very interesting. And again, the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus are going to be in the time of Jacob's trouble. And verse 15, which show the work of, of the law written in their hearts, their conscience also bearing witness, and their thoughts the meanwhile accusing or else excusing one another. So that's a very interesting verse as well, because the law is written in our hearts. I mean, the thought life and everything, how our thoughts go, accusing yourself and excusing yourself, very, very common thing to, to do um, when, when you're lost and even after you're saved. There's times where even after you're saved, you would think up excuses for yourself. You know, you do something, uh, like for example, you stole a candy bar when you were younger from the store, and you knew stealing was wrong, but you really wanted that candy bar, and you made up every excuse in your mind to justify it. You can't, this, your mind, you thought, well, it's just a candy bar. It's only 59 cents. Who's going to miss that? But, you know, those things add up on the business side of businesses and everything. But you were excusing yourself, and your own conscience is accusing you, and then you're excusing it because you don't want to face up to the fact that you did something wrong. That's, you know, accusing and excusing one another. And that does happen. The conscience will do that. Uh, you will find excuses and your conscience will be there to convict you. And when you get saved, the Holy Spirit's there to convict you. And you can wind up quenching the spirit and everything. The Bible makes references to that. And just completely ignoring it and making up your own excuses. I mean, that's just, that's, that's a lot of that is pride as well. So, very important thing there. And that's, that's how the conscience can, can work, most definitely. And verse 16, in the day when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to my gospel. So you see right there, from what it looks like there, that would be the, the, uh, the secrets of men being judged would probably be a, uh, the uh, great white throne judgment. Because again, you have the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. The faith of Jesus is still there in the time of Jacob's trouble, but it's different. Now, how does it work exactly? I really don't know. But what I do know is that Jesus is the atonement, and they're having to keep the commandments in order to see the Lord and make it into the millennial kingdom, and so on and so forth. But it looks like the judgment in the secret of secrets of men would be the great white throne judgment, because they are going to be judged by, the, by, the, by Jesus Christ as well. They're going to be judged by that faith, because people who turned to the mark of the beast had two choices. They could put their faith in Jesus and kept the commandments, or they take the mark and they go to hell. Obviously, they did the latter. So, also, the cross-reference for that would be Ecclesiastes 12.14. Ecclesiastes chapter 12 and verse 14. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret, th every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. So you see right there, secrets. Verse matches. And notice that Paul says, my gospel. The gospel of grace was revealed to Paul. Ephesians 3. Ephesians chapter 3, verses 2 to 6. If ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which has given me to you word, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery, as I wrote afore in few words, whereby when ye read, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, which in other ages was not made known in, unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit, that the Gentiles should be, should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel. So you see, that's, the gospel of grace was revealed to Paul. 
All of this was revealed to Paul, Jew and Gentile being one body in Christ. That was all revealed to Paul. Now, on the contrary as well, though, what hyper-dispensationalists like to say is that the church actually started with Paul, since all of this has been revealed to him. Not true. Go to Romans 16, 7. Romans chapter 16 and verse 7. Got to watch out for hyper-dispensationalists out there. They're, they're what we like to call the dry cleaners. Romans 16, 7. Salute Andronicus and, and Junia, my kinsmen and my fellow prisoners, who are of note among the apostles, who also were in Christ before me. So when you get a hyper-dispensational uh, heretic out there that likes to say, well, the church started with Paul, and Paul started the body of Christ, take them to this verse and then see, see how, much, how quickly they stop and they can't even answer it. Watch how quickly they start to foam out the mouth. Uh, no, there were people in Christ before Paul. The gospel is just revealed to Paul. That doesn't mean that the church wasn't there before Paul. Very important thing to know. But with that being said, we're going to go ahead and end it right there for the, for the remainder of this study. And we will pick up again in the next one in verse 17. And with that being said, I will see you all in the next video. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Thank you for watching Authorized Version Bible Thumper Ministries. James chapter 4 and verse 14. Whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow, for what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away. The gospel is this. Romans chapter 3 verses 10 to 12. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth, there is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way, they are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. Friend, you are not a good person. Romans chapter 3 verses 19 to 23. Now we know what things soever the law saith, it saith to them who are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped, and all the world may become guilty before God. Therefore by the deeds of the law there shall no flesh be justified in his sight, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. But now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Even the righteousness of God which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Have you ever lied, cheated, fornicated, or even killed? James 2 verse 10. For whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. You have sinned against a perfect, holy God. The punishment for sin is eternal hell. Matthew chapter 5 verses 29 to 30. And if thy right eye offend thee, pluck it out, and cast it from thee. For it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish, and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. And if thy right hand offend thee, cut it off, and cast it from thee. For it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish, and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 11 Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. But we are made manifest unto God, and I trust also are made manifest in your consciences. Do you fear God? Are you sorry for your sins? Are you desperate for salvation? A new life? 2 Corinthians 7.10 For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented of. But the sorrow of the world worketh death. The Good News 1 Corinthians 15 verses 1 through 4 Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Jesus died, was buried, and rose again the third day for your personal sins against God, so that you can be justified. Romans 3 verse 24 Being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Romans chapter 10 verses 9 to 13 
that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Call on the Lord, ask for the free gift, and receive the new birth today. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 17 Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new.